Hey everyone, my name is Hannah, and that's my partner Jesse. And together, we're on a journey to see the world by sea. We recently decided to document our journey and thought the best place to start was the beginning. We wanted a way to escape our busy lives and explore this beautiful planet. We live in the Seattle area in Washington State, so we set out to find a motor yacht that would allow us to explore the Puget Sound and San Juan Islands. In August of 2021, we found someone selling their 1984 42-foot uniflight for $5,000, but needed a lot of love. The previous owner had been living on the boat for the last 10 years and had never taken it out and did very little maintenance. Knowing it would take quite a bit of time and money, we wanted to start right away. It was sitting in Port Angeles, which is about a three hour drive from where we were living. So we packed up our stuff and our cat Crowley and headed there the following weekend. Let's just say that when we arrived, the conditions were less than ideal. The floor was covered by carpet that had probably never been vacuumed. There was garbage everywhere and a thick layer of dust covering every surface. Neither the plumbing or electrical worked, and the previous owner simply ran power strips throughout the boat, daisy-chained together. Since we were there for the whole weekend, we did not want to sleep there overnight without first doing some serious cleaning. We found a lot of garbage that indicated it hadn't been cleaned in a very long time, including this box of corn muffin from 1996. The next thing to go was the nasty carpets. It already started looking quite a bit better after those were gone. After our first night of sleep on the boat, it was time to tackle the outside the next morning. We needed to remove a thick layer of dirt in order to assess the state of the fiberglass, gel coat, and paint. The chairs and upholstery in the flybridge were moldy and needed to be replaced. We also discovered a big expensive project that needed to be done as soon as possible. The flybridge enclosure needed to be replaced as the old one had large rips and fall was quickly approaching. Meanwhile, Crowley was quickly adjusting to the boat life and enjoyed watching the ducks outside. After a pressure wash and scrub, she was starting to come alive again, and we were already starting to enjoy some time on the water, even if we were at the dock.
leak in the enclosure, the wood in the entryway had rotted and was leaking into the cabin. We replaced the wood board with new marine grade lumber and then sealed the edges with 5200. Crowley started to explore even further, trying to decide if he wanted to jump onto the dock. As a side note, that fiberglass pole that Crowley is about to walk over, I accidentally grabbed while trying to rescue a buoy and had shards in my hands for a few days. Ouch. The boat came with two Detroit Diesel 671 turbocharged engines that hadn't been run in over 10 years. We knew that the transmissions had been rebuilt, but we didn't know the condition of the engines. After checking the fluids and inspecting the injectors, we decided to try starting the engines. Port engine came first. The starter was frozen up and would not engage the flywheel. So we first removed the starter to see if we could clean it up and get it to fire. On top of this, the starter switch was not making a connection to the starter itself. After some cleanup and a long screwdriver to bridge the connection between hot and ground, we were able to start the engine. Now that we knew it started if we bypassed the ignition, we needed to get it working with a switch. After testing the voltage of the 12 volt ignition line, we found that it was only around 7 volts, indicating that there was an issue with the wire. We traced down the cable and found that it had been punctured by a zip tie at some point in the past, which allowed moisture to seep in and the wires corroded. We replaced the wire as well as the switches in the helm, and voila! Like the port engine, the starboard engine starter was frozen up. After a repeat of previous steps, we were ready to start. Once we were fairly confident that the engines would only need some regular maintenance and a tune-up, we moved to the next pressing matter pulling the boat out of the water so we could inspect the through holes and prop. There was a lot of pile worms and gunk, and the zincs had dissolved, but the props looked like they were in good shape.
were lucky and did not find any major issues while it was out of the water. We took the opportunity to pressure wash and paint the bottom, attach some new zinc plates, and paint the prop with a zinc plating paint to keep any metal on the boat from corroding over time. We only needed the boat in the yard for about a week before we were able to put it back in the water, and she looked better than ever. Next, it was time to do some maintenance on the engines. We started by checking the valve clearance and adjusting the timing of the injectors. We also changed the oil, replaced the fuel and oil filter. We got new 8D batteries, which we will use for our engine bank. Because we are adding more batteries than what came with the boat, we needed new higher amp alternators as well. We opted for dual 100 amp output alternators. Before we knew it, we were off on our first sea trial. As an added bit of insurance, we brought along an experienced Detroit diesel mechanic in case anything came up. There is still a lot of work that needs to be done, and we welcome any recommendations in the comment section that you may have as we continue the restoration process. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. We would also really appreciate if you checked out our Patreon for some exclusive content and benefits, and support us as we continue this journey. Thanks for watching!